Hello. See my previous video uh, for a link to the uh, to the video I'm responding to here, and um, the criticism I had of an unofficial James Randi test, which was done uh, for dowsing for coffee. The problem. I'm going to go into greater detail on this video because of the fact that my previous video I was a tad emotional. Uh, unfortunately, I had uh, let my um, I had let my response get away with me. Now that I'm calmed down, I can give a proper response as to why this particular type of experiment has a major flaw in it. Um, which pertains to, and this is um, the video I'm responding to, I should mention, was done under as part of a series called James Randi Psychic Investigator. This was done back around the time when it was around a $10,000 or $100,000 challenge, before the million dollar challenge was uh, officially started in 1998. Um, and for that source, you can um, ask Randi himself. Um, he, refer he referenced it in another article in a recent uh, publication of uh, Skeptic Magazine. Uh, anyway, long story short, this is the problem uh, with the statistics that we're looking at here. Um, there is no use of Bayesian statistics here, so we're not taking a look at relative probability of 1 in 5 versus 4 in 5 of, uh, of her getting this. We're working with null hypothesis theory, which is that she would, um, she would be able to get the hit versus not getting the hit. Now the problem with both this particular experiment and the second one is the fact that each of these, um, that she's having to use, she's having to guess which of the five bags this is. Number one of which is the fact that after making each pick of the bag, there's actually a compounding probability less one that she would each get the bag. So Randy's estimate in this video that it would be by chance one in five of her getting the, um, the crystal might be a little bit off. But that being said, even if it were true, that raises a severe problem in the testing procedure. You see, this particular demonstration has only done one trial round. And by one trial round, I mean she's guessed which of the five bags um, that that entire guessing of five bags is one total trial. You cannot make any assessment about any phenomena off one trial. This is why scientific experiments in every field, and I'm talking everything from physics to medicine to anything which is being tested for a hypothesis, you use multiple trials. Um, in psychology, the uh, multiple thousands of trials are used. There's a second problem here as well in the statistical calculation. There, uh, and this happens in both the, previous uh, both the previous video I was responding to and this video I'm responding to here. That is the fact that um, this test has been constructed with a, um, there has not been any construction of a one, and for most of Randy's tests, I, like I said, I'm glad when Randy does it, so this way it's set up with less than a 1 in 120 chance, or less than 1 in 1,000 chance of this resulting by probability. I mean, that is, you know, that is statistically significant. Uh, realms of this getting by chance if the person passes the test, and that is a proper demonstration of statistical value. These two experiments here, and this is what ticks me off, is the fact that they've actually uh, used this over again, is the fact that um, if you use a probability of say 1 in 5 or 1 in 3, and then uh, if you set it up as such, and then you demand only one trial, then the problem still remains, okay, so it's a one in three chance that the person will select. Okay, say for example for the coffee cup, it was uh, which which of the coffee cup containers had the coffee in it. It would be a one in three chance of them getting it, of of them in one set trial, say getting the coffee. Which means if they only did one trial, even if they had gotten the coffee, it still would have been chance results. And to pass the protocols on that ground is inappropriate. The same goes here. The person agreed to Randy's challenge and uh, the. The person agreed to Randy's challenge, uh, and the chance of them obtaining, of them locating the crystal in one of the bags, was a one in five probability. The problem still remains. If the person had gotten the crystal only in one trial, it still would have been resulted by chance. Now remember that in order for statistical significance to be obtained, uh, uh, to qu uh, Ray Hyman in an article of Skeptical Inquirer, uh, where he was responding to um, uh, to critics who were. Um, uh, who were he, he had advocated a case of when they were testing a Russian girl um, re back in 2000 uh, by the name of Natalia Kurashenka, I believe her name was, or something like that. Um, and her, uh, they were testing her supposed capability to be able to see um, through people's bodies as to what their ailments were. Now the thing is that he put the statistical significance marker at one in a hundred, and his quote, and he, and he said, and I quote, 0 0.05 is not sufficient. As extraordinary claims require extraordinary proof, st significance must be found at the one in a hundred level or one in a thousand level before an extraordinary claim can be determined to uh, be real. So I I'm paraphrasing a little bit here, but that that's the general gist of it. 
So for a combined probability, say for example he had passed the test, that would have meant a 1 in 9 probability compounded of him getting the, uh, the coffee cup twice or uh, for the previous trial, or for this crystal lady, um, it would have been only a combination of 1 in 25 of this resulting uh, compound probability of, her, of him getting both, uh, sorry, of her getting both trials accurate. Point being, it is nowhere near uh, statistically significant. Um, therefore, both these trials are incorrect and null, uh, you know, are, are, are statistically incorrect. They are invalid as, uh, as proper trials of testing for uh, extraordinary claims because they do not provide criteria uh, in, in terms of statistics for uh, meeting the extraordinary proof level requirement for extraordinary claims. Um, and as a skeptic, um, I have a problem with this. And my concern is that um, I thought this was a one-time incident. And um, now the thing is that my concern is the fact that if this is a, um, my concern is that this is, uh, you know, what, back during the 1980s when Randy was first doing this, I could understand him making a uh, one or two mistakes like this. And I was under the impression that he had since corrected them, uh, especially in, uh, that, uh, in addition to um, uh, many other things, including requiring only one in a hundred, um, in, uh, only requiring odds of one in a hundred before the preliminary test was passed. It used to be one in a thousand. So he has done some amendments, and I was under the impression that this was one of the things he had corrected. If informal tests or preliminary tests are still using this problem, um, you know, of only one in three, especially when uh, the on the mandate, uh, which is on the uh, frequently asked questions, it says that the uh, claimant has to pass odds of one in a hundred. This is a notorious discrepancy between the um, between what is, is is officially stated and what is actually being practiced. And and if the tests are not meeting statistical um, are not meeting proper uh, requirements both for controls and for proper statistical evaluation of the data then one has to wonder if the, if the James Randi Educational Foundation challenge does not have some serious flaws, uh, you know, if the $1 million challenge does not have some serious flaws, making it a, um, how shall we say, less than, less than ideal. Uh, I'm trying to put this politely here, but the point is that maybe, we're, uh, maybe we should be taking a serious look about whether or not um, the $1 million challenge is actually legitimate at this point for um, a legitimate challenge for um, testing for uh, for uh, you know, uh, is a legitimate challenge, or is legitimately following scientific protocols for um, uh, for testing p uh, claimants. I mean, I, I agree that most of these claimants are no doubt woo woo, but the thing is, I don't think the tests are being appropriately drawn. It means that even if they did get a hit, which would probably be no doubt by chance means, then the um, the and and if the challenge peop uh, if the challenge uh, the people running the challenge knew full well that this was a problem, then they could easily make the claim like, oh, it was just by chance results, and they can back out. It's rigging the results, making them look bad, and making our position as skeptics look even worse. So um, now I've already had pro I've already mentioned the problems in relation to experimenter bias before and other issues. Um, you know, that plagues not only the $1 million challenge, but most of parapsychological research, both proponent and skeptic. But that's a, that's a more complicated issue which can be dealt with in actual science. This, uh, namely these two uh, videos which I've seen here, are a flagrant disregard of scientific protocols. And, you know, I would consider that if this is becoming standard practice for the challenge, then this is making the challenge uh, highly circumspect, in my opinion. Um, I'm trying to be appropriate here. I'm not trying to do an ad hoc, but I am seriously saying, um, and I'm making an appeal to Randy and uh, you know to anybody else who um, uh, you know to Randy if he watches this or any other skeptic who might happen to be on your, here on YouTube and has a uh, frequent uh, conversation with Randy to bring this uh, to bring this to his attention and say uh, that he might require that it might require his stepping in and seriously looking at his challenge to see if it's um, you know it might require his coming back in and doing some serious leadership on this because I think the challenge may have a couple of serious flaws in it. Just my thoughts, but, you know, it might not be a bad idea, especially considering these plan to shut down the challenge in two years. Um, yeah, this could be a problem, especially for the skeptic community at large. So, kind of the canary in the coal mine here. Hope this will, uh, hope that you guys will, uh, hope that the skeptics will do something about, uh, the fellow skeptics will do something about this, because if not, I'm going to have to declaim uh, James Randi and his $1 million challenge, and I really don't want to have to do that. So, um, yeah, hope this helps. Toodles.